I've Oaks Dane here and today I'm going to take the Clean Slate book tag. So this was created by Michael from Catalyst Reads and I stole it from Todd the Librarian. Nobody tagged me, I just thought I'd give it a go, so why not? This one's interesting because I haven't got a stack of books or anything, so the questions are kind of more open-ended. So this one should be quite an interesting one to do, I'm looking forward to it. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so there are 10 questions here, and then at the end, I'm gonna tag three people to take it after me as well. Although, if you wanna take it, take it, and if you don't wanna take it, don't take it. Really, the whole tagging system I just use to like mention channels that I like, I have kind of no expectation that anyone will actually film a tag, because I tag them. But anyway, question one. Are there any genres that you're going to read more of or less of in 2018? I wouldn't say so, but purely because I don't go in for genres anyway, so I tend to just pick up books that take my fancy. I think I'd like to read some more kind of diverse books. You know, I think reading stuff about characters that are different to you as a person is great because it just gives you a new kind of outlook on the world as well, so why not? Question number two. Are there any books you have recently read that changed or challenged some of your own philosophies and beliefs? Not really, I don't think. Not, nothing that particularly immediately stands out. I'm sure I have, but it, it's all been in kind of little ways, so maybe just the odd part of a narrative or something like that, or a line that somebody says. I wouldn't say, um, you know, I haven't read, say, a big non-fiction book about, I don't know, the economy or something like that that changed the way I look at the economy. I think every book that you read does change your beliefs to a certain extent. I mean, there are things that I picked up, even little tiny things about the way like sentences formed and all this kind of stuff that where I've read or I've read somebody who writes in a certain way and then it's changed the way I look at that style of writing. It's kind of hard to explain really, but I know what I mean. Quite often I tend to read books that support my philosophies and beliefs, I suppose. Question number three, who would you recommend for a newbie to watch? Now from the way that this question is structured, I'm assuming I'm only su supposed to mention one person. So I picked Heather from Bookables, just because I think she's, you know, she's got a really bubbly, nice personality, she's very approachable, but also the way that she shoots her videos, I mean, the backdrops and everything, it just feels so welcoming. I just think Heather's production value is great and um, I just think she's a good role model for the community as well. So I think if you're a new booktuber, she's a good person to watch. Question number four, do you have a reading book bucket list? So I do, there are about 1300 entries on it, maybe more. It grows all the time, it's growing faster than I can ever read, so I know that I'm never gonna complete it, which maybe takes away the point of having a bucket list, but whatever, I like to be ambitious. Maybe one day I will live forever. Even that said though, the amount of books that are constantly released, books are released faster than anyone could ever read them, so unless something dreadful happens and like 99% of the world's population dies, with, you know, my TBR list is never gonna get down to zero. And that's a good thing. Question number five, what is it about booktube that has surprised you the most? For me, this has been how supportive people have been. So, I mean, I've been around on YouTube for years. I think my account was like 2006, it was created. Um, but I've never really wholeheartedly embraced a community and jumped on in, I suppose. And since I've started doing that, it's, it's just constantly amazed me how, you know, how receptive people have been, how nice they've been, how, People have kind of stopped by the channel and subscribed and all of this stuff. And in particular, there are people whose channels I've watched for like two, three years. And it's really surreal watching them pop up on my videos, leaving comments and stuff. It's just, um, you know, I've, I feel humbled. And, you know, thank you to everybody who's watched so far and commented and liked and all that kind of stuff. Question number six, what are some of your goals? And this doesn't have to be just related to Booktube. So I'm a writer, so it would be nice to have a bestseller or two. I think my, my last major life goal was that I wanted to be full-time freelance by the time I was 30. And it, I decided that last year when I was 27 and I went freelance full-time, I think it was six days before my 28th birthday. So I kind of did that ahead of time which is good because it means I can now set a new goal. I mean, I'm making a living from freelancing. It would be nice to be able to make a living from book royalties alone and, um, you know, from public speaking and all that kind of thing. But I guess I'm still relatively young, so. Question number seven. If you could meet dead or alive, any writer, artist or musician, who would they be? So this is a very tough question and I've asked other people this same question in the interviews that I've done, but I've always kind of dreaded being asked it myself. 
I think I maybe go for Tom Waits just because he's kind of a renaissance man so he's you know he's almost like a poet, musician, actor, artist you know and various other things beside that so I think he'd be a really interesting person to meet you know as much as I'd like to meet somebody like Bukowski or somebody like that I mean I think they'd also be a you know, Hemingway and all those, like, they're kind of all assholes, so, you know, I don't know whether I would want to meet them. Bob Dylan would be interesting as well, but I would want to meet Bob Dylan when he was younger, because now he's old, it's hard to understand what he's actually saying. Question eight, would you rather have your life written by your favorite author or be portrayed in a movie by your favorite actor slash actress? For me, this is easy, it'd be the favorite author. I mean, I, as much as I occasionally watch stuff, I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube. I would say YouTube forms at least 50% of my viewing. So I'm not really into movies and that kind of stuff. I guess I watch them. Even when I do watch stuff, I tend to watch documentaries. Hello, kitty. How are you doing? Kitty's come down to say hello. So even when I watch stuff, it tends to be documentaries rather than movies. So I don't know. I don't really have a favorite actor or actress. As for favourite writer, I mean that's a tough one as well, but I actually, I checked my Goodreads, sorry I keep glancing down here because the cat's sitting on a little poof. That's why my arm's doing this, I'm stroking him while filming. But yeah, I think I was looking on my Goodreads earlier and it has a list of like the authors that you've read and stuff and the, 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 the number of books by them that you've read and Terry Pratchett was my top one. So if Terry Pratchett is right in my life, that could be pretty cool. Fun fact number two was um, R.L. Stein who wrote the Goosebumps books. What are you doing, cat? Can you take your tail out of my squash, please? Oh, big yawn. Question number nine. What are some of the challenges you have had to overcome or would still like to improve upon in regards to your channel? So there are a few of these really. I think one of the challenges is that I don't necessarily read mainstream stuff. I don't read much YA and obviously that's one of the big trends on booktube. And I also don't tend to specialize either. So my accent's weird today. Other channels that I've seen that are successful, if they don't talk about YA, they quite often do, you know, science fiction and fantasy or classics or some specific subgenre. Whereas I just read about everything and just talk about what I like, I guess. Another one of the challenges is things like readathons and stuff like that, because I tend to be quite busy and so my my reading habits are pretty set in stone. So you know, with running my blog and being a writer and various other bits and bobs, I get sent a lot of different books that I have to read at certain times and all this and all that. So it'd be quite difficult for me to participate in certain readathons and to take part in sprints and all that kind of stuff because I'd have to work it around the rest of the stuff that I'm doing. And question 10, what advice would you give to someone that is thinking about deleting their booktube channel? Don't, don't get me wrong. I've again with my YouTube channel I've changed the kind of stuff I post here throughout the years if you look back at my really old videos it's just me playing guitar and all that kind of stuff and I've unlisted a lot of stuff or made it all private and that kind of thing but I haven't actually deleted the videos because you know I think it's important to keep them and to be able to look back on them so if you are thinking about deleting your booktube channel maybe audit your content and switch the videos that you're not happy with to unlisted if you want to create a new channel go ahead and do that but I'd advise against just flat out deleting your channel because it's one of those things you lose the data and the data is gone and that's sad so those are the 10 questions and there is one final question question 11 which is who do you tag and I'm going for you will say's books Kit Kats can read and Chrissy books and berries so there you go, that's who I tag. This has been the Clean Slate Book Tag. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, all the usual stuff. Let me know what you think of these answers. And I will be back again soon, but with some specific books to talk about instead of these uh, broader questions, which thank you, Michael, for creating. Thanks a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye.